Hey guys, it's Ruby with Anorthodox Aquatics here with you today in front of my SA South American Cichlid Tank to talk with you about cichlid breeding behavior. So there are about uh, over probably 1,300 species of cichlids. Um, they range from African, Asian, Central, the Middle American, um, and they can differ with behavior and uh, qualities and characteristics, but essentially they're all cichlids and they have the same uh, uh, basic core um, behavior traits. They are an aggressive fish. Uh, they can range from mildly to moderate to very, very aggressive. And that can depend on the species as well as what's going on, whether the tank is overstocked, whether they're breeding, um, and things like that. So, um, these cichlids, uh, the kind I have in here, are uh, convict uh, or polar blue parrots, short body convicts. I also have leucistic parrots in here. And um, there's one rainbow cichlid and a Monte Cristo cichlid in here as well. Fish like cichlids, um, some can be kept in community tanks, uh, smaller things like rams, things like that. Um, but uh, personally, I would keep species, uh, si well, cichlids uh, together in the same tank. Some people mix uh, the South Americans and the Africans, Asians together. Um, I personally don't do that, but many people do without problems. Um, I think it uh, depends on how you have your tank set up and how it's stocked as well. Um, they, cichlids uh, are very known for their competitive behavior when it comes to having different territories and uh, especially with our daily topic today, which is breeding behavior. So one important thing, uh, aspect to know about cichlid uh, behavior in general pertaining to breeding is the uh, hierarchy that uh, many fish actually exhibit in their behaviors uh, and in the tanks as general, um, which means that there is a top dog in the tank and, uh, oh, my top dog in the tank is the Monte Cristo cichlid. Right now he's behind that piece of decoration, the, the weird bubbler rock. Um, he, though, is not breeding in this tank, so he's kind of been elusive with all the extra aggression. Uh, so the hierarchy works where there are uh, levels of, um, uh, kind of levels of aggression. There's the top dog who is in kind of control of the tank, and then there's submissive fish before that. Um, underneath him is the next uh, submissive fish, and uh, below that, there's the next and the next and so on uh, until you get the weakest, most submissive fish in the tank. Uh, these guys, if there are aggressive behaviors such as, you know, confrontation, um, the more dominant one will usually win out. And uh, it's funny because it kind of results in like a chain reaction where the male will go at the weaker one or, you know, the most dominant male uh, will go after the weaker one and then that weaker one will go after the one weaker than that and so on. They can take their aggression out on other fish in how they are uh, placed in that hierarchy. Now when breeding, um, when breeding behavior is going on in the tank, males will readily challenge other males and females uh, that are not breeding. But if you have a lot of uh, cichlids in your tank and they are breeding, um, a lot of the females will be claimed. Um, so in some cases, all, all three of my females in this tank are claimed. Uh, a general rule 
uh, because of breeding behaviors is to have several females to a male. Um, and this, uh, you know, decreases aggression a bit when males are trying to claim their female in the tank. So in this tank here, I have three breeding pairs. Um, and I'm super excited because here, let me show you up close. So the first pair I established in this tank is this pair of polar blues. And the female, I believe, has laid her eggs. See, she has a pink belly, which uh, brightens when uh, around breeding time. And um, she has laid her eggs in one of these rocks. Now, this male here, uh, he's probably the most dominant, uh, you know, HRP, convict, whatever, hybrid, polar blue in this tank. Uh, he was having huge problems with, oh, he's not back there. He was having huge, oh yeah, he is. See, there's a white or a leucistic platinum uh, parrot male back there. They were having issues with each other um, because uh, they were fighting over the same female. And uh, both of this female and male were going at him, and, and the male was lip-locking with that uh, leucistic male. But the leucistic male back here, let me see if I can actually, there he is. There is a leucistic female that he found and paired off with, so now he's uh, leaving the polar blue pair alone. So I'm excited because I have a polar blue pair, a leucistic pair back there, and I also have this pair. There's the female, and there's the male. So a polar blue, oh, yep, see, even females go after. Uh, so I have a mixed pair with the leucistic and polar blue. I'm super excited about that. So there are many distinct uh, breeding behaviors with cichlids. Um, they will come at each other, males and females alike, when there are eggs and prey around. Uh, they'll kind of do this, you know, uh, come at each other and wave their bodies around, kind of circle around each other. And um, in stream, extreme cases, they will lip lock each other. Um, and, uh, you know, trying to claim a female or a territory, a nesting spot. Um, when fry or eggs are around, uh, the aggression in the tank increases drastically because these cichlids are great parents. Um, they will guard and protect the eggs and fry uh, at, to, at all costs. They're their main goal in life, as with many animals, is to breed and reproduce. It's just in their nature. Personally, I remove the fry uh, very soon after becoming free swimming um, because of the aggression that increases in the tank. Um, and sometimes even I will move breeding pairs to an entire separate tank if I if my goal is to get a high number of fry, uh, because in a lot of cases, uh, other breeding pairs or other fish that you know are in the tank will eat the fry, and you know that contributes to why the parents are so protective. Interestingly enough, cichlids can be monogamous and polygamous. Um, I did have a breeder stud that uh, had three sets of fry in this tank with three different females. So I thought that was kind of crazy. Um, as far as, you know, your tank set up, I would have lots of hides, uh, caves, rocks. They like to lay their eggs on smooth surfaces um, in clutches of up to 50 to 800, depending on the fish. And, uh, you know, they like to lay them on smooth surfaces like these mugs inside this hamster ball and those rocks. Um, and uh, the fry are free swimming usually um, between like 7 to 10 days after the eggs are laid. 
Things like feeding habits and physiological characteristics also happen during breeding. Um, as far as physiological, the levels of hormones go up, um, components in the blood plasma, um, and uh, some may feed more, but le uh, usually less during uh, breeding time. And uh, also physiologically, um, the color can vary, and uh, you know, they can just exhibit uh, like their finage will, you know, in, uh, they'll puff out their finage or their gills. And um, yeah, it's, it's so fascinating to me to watch uh, the breeding behavior of these guys. Now, when these fish are courting each other, the males and females will, uh, it, it, a lot of people can have trouble distinguishing whether or not they're fighting or exhibiting breeding behavior. Uh, they will dance with each other, as I like to say, uh, waving their fins, um, kind of hugging each other closely around their bodies. Um, you know, it's, it's very apparent that they're, behaviors will differ, uh, you know, during breeding time. Um, they can exhibit uh, curbed aggression sometimes when there are more fish stocked in the tank, um, but overstocking can also be a bad idea because of how protective uh, the parents are. They will, like I said, readily go after other fish uh, with zero fear it seems so there's that also so another cool thing um, is that there are three types of uh, parenting behavior once uh, there are fry and that is uh, open nesting or open brooders um, there are cave brooders and uh, there are mouth brooders and um, the open brooders, what they will do is they will dig in the substrate. They'll move rocks or gravel around or uh, in sand, you know, they'll make, they'll make dips in the substrate to, you know, kind of nest and make the place safer um, for their eggs so they can guard them easier. Um, and the cave brooders uh, or secretive brooders, obviously uh, in these, you know, rocks or caves, they will breed. Um, some cichlids will vary between those two. Uh, they can be both in some cases. Uh, and then the mouth brooders will carry, uh, there's, there's two types, ones that will, um, carry their fry and, or their eggs around, um, until they hatch. And the other type will, uh, either do that and, um, carry their fry around in the mouth, move them around to a safer place if they feel they need to. Well guys, that's uh, pretty much it in a nutshell, kind of uh, mostly what I wanted to talk about pertaining to uh, cichlid breeding, um, specifically in this case, American cichlids. So um, thanks for joining me, Ruby with Unorthodox Aquatics. Uh, subscribe if you like, and you guys have a great day. Bye.